Hi everybody, this is Josh Becerra. I'm here with Colin Herdman. We thought it would be fun to talk a little bit about uh, software as a service, SaaS. So we've had some experience. We've built a couple of SaaS products and put them into market over the years. Uh, so we're familiar with the development, the product market fit and scalability around a SaaS business. So um, why don't you tell them a little bit about what we've put in market? Yeah, well certainly SaaS is a, uh uh, a niche that we have a lot of love for, uh, both in terms of our own experience with it, as well as the clients that we serve through Agurian. Uh, it has just so much incredible potential, uh, and we love tapping into that for our clients, and we certainly love tapping into that uh, when we were developing our own products as yeah. well. Um, so just to tell you a little bit about the experience that we had, uh, in the early days of Twitter, uh, we created a product called Local Tweeps. And this is really like early days. Yep. 2008, let's say, something like that, right? Yep, yeah. yep, Okay. 2008, yep. yep. And uh, really what we wanted to do was to allow Twitter users to find each other locally and kind of build those local connections amongst mm -hmm. Twitter users. So we created a product that you would um, log in to our product with your Twitter profile, you'd put in your zip code, and then that would associate you with a city and a state uh, and then a tweet would go out on behalf of your account to all of your followers, letting you know that you just signed up on uh, local tweets, which yeah. is a local directory. And yeah, we signed up like 30,000 users in two days. Yeah. Uh, we got just, a lot of press coverage. Yeah, it was pretty just really fun. took off. It was really, really awesome. But we didn't have a monetization strategy, <laughs> and so we didn't really make any money off yeah. of it. Um, but that experience uh, parlayed into uh, SMB tweet. Well, and I'll just say that like viral loop that yeah. we created where when somebody signed up, a tweet actually went out. I think that was one, a big learning that we had was sure. creating that viral loop. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah. No, the viral loop is fantastic. So if you can get a viral loop going on your uh, SaaS product, that's there you the way go. to go. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so then uh, SMB tweet came along where uh, we really sympathized with small, medium sized businesses wanting them to be able to create a following on Twitter, yep. uh, where they just didn't have the time, um, really the understanding of how to do it well. So we built an algorithm based off of the way a, a, a human would, would build a following correctly on Twitter yep. and uh, launched that product. And uh, really what the product did is allowed um, a small, medium-sized business to um, put in uh, specific keywords and geographies and find people um, that would be likely to follow them back, like right. a, a lo local pizza shop or a uh, local barber, things like that, dentist. Yeah. Create a following without it being spammy yep. uh, and really kind of help um, the um, kind of that vibrant culture of Twitter take hold locally. Um, and unfortunately, with Twitter changing their terms of use, we had to submarine that product. Yeah. Uh, we were generating really good bad. revenue off of it and a lot of great um, experiences and happy customers, uh, but lesson learned on building on top of uh, um, somebody else's platform. Yeah. So, uh, well, and just having tasted kind of the, the sweet nectar of SaaS revenue where someone pays you monthly to interact with a piece of software, we didn't really have a huge customer service or support situation. So it was really it was really nice. SaaS is a great business model if you can make it work. Yep, yep, yeah. So, you know, those experiences, uh, we have plenty of other uh, products that we've we brought to market, um, but don't need to get into to those any further. But um, yeah. that SaaS definitely, um, and, and product is definitely, um, um, you know, in our hearts, something that we really enjoy building yeah. um, and we'll continue to, to experiment with. So. Yeah. So we um, have, you know, SaaS clients, obviously, at Agurian yep. that we service and we have our own experience that we can reflect on. And I think bef prior to starting the film this video, we talked a little bit about two kind of key areas where we think it's important that SaaS marketers are really focused. Um, so the two areas are around testing, and then the second one is content. So maybe we could talk first a little bit about testing. Yeah, so a lot of with testing is you're trying to figure out you know, product market fit mm -hmm. that goes in terms of you know the audiences that you're trying to build and get in front of, who are those buyers. Um, and then also around pricing models and trying to understand you know, what are people willing to pay yep. and how do we get them on these recurrent subscriptions that um, they feel really good about. Yeah. Uh, so you know there's a lot of tools, especially within digital, to really hone in on those audiences 
Uh, and so, you know, ensuring that you know, your site has firing the pixels correctly, uh, ensuring that you understand how audiences can get built around Google Analytics uh, through Google Ads, through Facebook and Instagram and you know, the other social platforms is really, really key. Um, you know, those audiences will allow you to narrow in um, and build out uh, personas. And mm -hmm. these personas would allow you to target them um, through content, through paid advertising. Uh, so that's one of the areas that really um, key in on with clients is the opportunity to build audiences. And I've even heard it said that you know, platforms like Google Ads are moving away from really more keyword driven and more toward audience driven. Right. So audiences are really, really big, yep. um, especially having those audiences and having that as first party data. Um, once you have that, it really turns into, you know, um, from a paid perspective, um, how are you spending your, your budget? And we use a bimodal framework mm -hmm. for that where, you know, uh, there's the core where about 70 to 80% of your ad spend is going toward kind of tried and true methods. Yep. We're able to deliver a return on investment. Mm -hmm. um, but that you're also experimenting and the, the publishers, uh, Google, Facebook, et cetera, uh, they want you to experiment, they want you to test, and you get rewarded for, for doing that, yep. uh, both in terms of what the publishers offer you, but also the learnings that you get from it. So uh, really that bimodal framework of where you uh, have budget dedicated to you know core, but then also you have budget dedicated to experimentation yep. um, within your advertising. Yep. And then finally, CRO, yep. conversion rate optimization, really testing across the landing pages on your site, really understanding what types of language, uh, what types of imagery is, is getting people along that customer journey to, yeah. to, to convert. Yeah, I think you know CRO can be really interesting way to do some testing around like what is my call to action, right? Uh, do we offer a 30-day free trial? Uh, how is our pricing look? All of these things can be tested. So once you've kind of established these audiences and you're bringing them in, you know, running these A-B tests are critical mm -hmm. to see are there ways that we can get a higher percentage of people to either start that free trial or you know, start that subscription. Um, getting people to move down the funnel quicker is, is like the, the sauce, the special sauce to software as a service. Yep. So, yep, which gets us really into content. Right. Yeah. So, content is another big thing. Uh, you know, we look at content from a customer journey perspective. So, there's people who are have kind of an unmet need and they start searching on that unmet need and they might not even have the vocabulary or, or industry jargon yet. And so, that's really high funnel content that needs to be created. And as you kind of move through that funnel all the way down to where they have now incorporated all the jargon and they understand the, the industry or what they're actually looking for very clearly, now they're starting to do branded search and things like that. So content is vastly important throughout this customer journey, wouldn't you say? Yeah, absolutely. And I think when you think about content, uh, from a perspective of um, content where it's directly related to what you're selling, mm -hmm. you need to ensure that uh, users, potential customers, understand exactly what the product is and what it does. Um, so there's that side of it. The other side of it then is kind of that ancillary content, which is, um, you know, my product is related to these types of um, searches and topics mm -hmm. uh, where you can create content that is getting, like you said, people higher funnel that are looking for solutions or looking to be educated. Um, you know, one of the uh, axioms that we hear is, um, you know, people buy from where they get educated. So as you're building out that content on your site, really being uh, strategic and ensuring that the content that you're creating is educating, uh, but also directing people toward how your product can uh, augment whatever it is that they're searching on and whatever kinds of education they're looking for. But depending on what you're selling, you're gonna really need to decide, can the topics for that content come from uh, search volume? So can you actually use SEO principles to do kind of some of the, the keyword research necessary to understand what are even the topics that people are talking about within this customer journey? Mm -hmm. where, are there, where are there opportunities where there might be a certain topic within a certain stage of that customer journey that isn't being answered very clearly, that you could actually provide the best answer for that topic or question? And that's a one way to really approach kind of SaaS content is to say, what are the 
volumes of searches from an SEO perspective around the topics that are related to our product mm -hmm. or our service, right? And so then understanding all those different topics, where they fit in that customer journey, how well your company is doing versus the competition on answering those questions and then where there might be opportunities. We've seen that to be a really great way for companies, especially SaaS, to start informing kind of what types of content that they should be writing. Yeah, and we've seen that, you know, from just a data perspective, the metrics show mm -hmm. that that strategy works, that yep. when you're compounding really, really great content around uh, a customer journey and uh, Google can see that you're creating this great content and you're creating it over time um, and you're staying up to date in what you're creating, that you start to get rewarded for that content. Yep. Um, I think in a lot of ways, um, you know, large companies we've seen, you know, Home Depot really dominate the, the windows and doors and kind of home uh, industry mm -hmm. with all the content they've created over the last decade and really outdistance themselves from competitors like Lowe's because they've just been really dedicated to that effort. Yep. Um, so from a content perspective, it really does pay off by just being diligent and really understanding from a, a, a metrics and data perspective, what is it that our customers are learning to get educated about? How can we create that content, create it consistently over time, um, and then have that draw them in and start getting, um, start seeing our product as being an answer to um, you know whatever ails them. Yeah, well there you go. So uh, from a SaaS marketer perspective, you know know that we have a lot of experience with our own SaaS products. We also use, uh, we also help a lot of uh, companies uh, that are in the SaaS space get results online and uh, know that testing and content are two huge pillars to having success when approaching your digital marketing. So that's it for today. Thanks everybody. Thank See you. See you next time.